In this video, we're going to discuss the retroviruses, their unique life cycle, and many of their unique features. Before we get to the retroviruses, though, it's important that we remind ourselves of some of the main features of RNA viruses. There are three general strategies for RNA viruses, the single-stranded RNA viruses, the double-stranded RNA viruses, and then the retroviruses. Both numbers one and two, single-stranded and double-stranded RNA viruses, require something called an RNA replicase, an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And the reason for this is that the RNA polymerase that's found inside human cells or any eukaryotic host cell can't replicate RNA. It can only make RNA from double-stranded DNA, and these viruses aren't bringing with them double-stranded DNA. So if you think about it like this, uh, an, a typical RNA polymerase is in humans and other eukaryotes is going to take double-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA, and it's going to make from that a single-stranded RNA copy. So it's a DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. However, in a, an RNA replicase, what's happening with an RNA virus is the RNA virus shows up with single-stranded, or in some cases double-stranded, RNA, and it needs to make more single-stranded, or in some cases double-stranded, RNA. That's a unique feature. That's an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and that doesn't exist in the eukaryotic world. And therefore, these RNA viruses need to bring with them their own RNA replicase. I hope that makes sense. Now, the retroviruses, we'll use HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, as our example. They're going to follow generally the same pattern you've already learned uh, for the life cycle of a virus, but there's a few key differences. And after this slide, I'm going to show you an image so you can hopefully visualize it a little bit better. So of course, they need to get in somehow, and that's going to, that's going to be their attachment and penetration. Their attachment, we'll see exactly what happens in the next slide, but they have glycoprotein spikes that are going to initiate attachment to the surfaces of what are called CD4 T cells. It's a subtype of our white blood cells that are obviously essential for our immunity, which is why an HIV infection leads to such immunosuppression. Penetration is going to happen by membrane fusion, which is typical for the enveloped viruses as well. Once the membrane fusion has taken place, uncoating has to happen, meaning that the viral membrane needs to be pulled away from the, the capsid, and the capsid itself needs to be degraded in order to expose the nucleic acid. And in this case, there's almost a capsid inside the capsid called a core. So we have a geometrically shaped capsid like what we're used to seeing with, uh, with most other viruses, and that's going to get degraded. But then inside that, the nucleic acids are protected by even more proteins, and those are going to need to be degraded eventually, and uh, the RNA is going to need to be exposed. So then here's where things get a little bit different. The uh, HIV variant or other retroviruses are going to bring with them the reverse transcriptase enzyme, and this is one you haven't heard about yet. Reverse transcriptase takes RNA and makes double-stranded DNA out of single-stranded RNA. It's the reverse of transcription, and therefore it's reverse transcriptase. So like we saw in the last slide, uh, a typical RNA polymerase is going to go from double-stranded DNA to single-stranded RNA in a eukaryote. We call that process transcription. Reverse transcription takes a single-stranded RNA and makes a double-stranded DNA out of it. And so this enzyme gets the name reverse transcriptase, abbreviated like this. Now, once it's been uh, reverse transcribed, that double-stranded DNA is actually integrated into the host cell's chromosome using an enzyme called integrase. This is analogous to lysogeny in the bacteriophage, where a lysogenic or temperate phage infecting a bacterium can, uh, can insert itself, integrate itself into the host cell's chromosome and remain there for a long time, um, really just being replicated. In this case, we're going to see that the genes are actually being expressed and virions are being produced in this integrated state. So then transcription happens eventually after usually a latent phase. So viral messenger RNAs are going to be produced as well as RNA genomes. Uh, those RNAs can be uh, fully expressed to, to proteins. And then we're going to get assembly and encapsidation. This is called maturation. This happens at the membrane right before budding to release the cells. There's an, or the cells, the virions. There's an important enzyme here called protease. So reverse transcriptase 
integrase and protease are three key enzymes that an HIV virion actually has to package with it, right? We see why reverse transcriptase needs to come with it. Integrase, the host cell isn't going to have uh, any sort of mechanism for integrating the virus into its own chromosome, nor would it want to. And the protease uh, is important because it turns out that uh, a lot of these proteins that build an HIV virion are produced in long um, polypeptide uh, concatamers, for lack of a better word, uh, polyproteins, and the protease comes in and snips them into their individual subunits that they can fold and then assemble. And then uh, typical of membrane-bound enveloped viruses, we see that uh, it's going to be released by budding. So let's take a look at that a little bit more visually in this slide here. Up here at the top, you can see the HIV virion. It has some glycoprotein spikes, which is typical of an enveloped virus, right? So what we see in the spikes are these guys right here, and it's actually made up of two different spikes. The little disc shape that's at the very, very surface of the spike is called glycoprotein 120. And then the little post that, uh, that makes sure that it stays stuck in the membrane is called glycoprotein 41, and they each play a very important role. So glycoprotein 120, is going to be the attachment protein. It's going to specifically interact with surface proteins called CD4 that are found only on the surface of these CD4 T cells, these specialized white blood cells. So GP120 finds these CD4 proteins on the surface of CD4 T cells and interacts with it and triggers endocytosis. Right? It basically induces the white blood cell, this, this uh, uh, CD4 T cell, to engulf the entire enveloped virion including its uh, its envelope and so um, the whole thing comes in and then the you can see the GP41 right here which is obviously already integrated into the um, into the membrane of the virion it then integrates into the membrane of the host cell and that allows a cool little trick where it can open up during uncoating and it can allow the nucleocapsid to be released. And then cellular proteases will degrade the nucleocapsid and expose the single-stranded RNA right here. And then that single-stranded RNA is going to be subjected to reverse transcription by reverse transcriptase, making a double-stranded DNA copy of it. It's then going to enter the cells through nucleoporins. Uh, once it gets into the nucleus, its integrase enzyme is going to cause it to integrate into one of the chromosomes somewhat randomly of the host cell, forming what's called a provirus. Just, and we use that same term, provirus or prophage, when we learned about uh, lysogenic bacteriophage. This is just the nucleic acid of the virus integrated into the chromosome. But unlike the prophage, these genes in the provirus can actually be transcribed, usually after a latent period. The mRNAs that are transcribed are exported out of the nucleus, some of them become the, the single-stranded RNA genome of the new virions. Others get translated into the various proteins. What proteins do we need? We need capsid proteins. We need core proteins. We need the enzymes, right? So reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease. And then we also need the spikes. And you can see the spikes up here. So the GP41, GP120 spikes migrate to the, the host cell's membrane so that when budding takes place, this, this induction of exocytosis at release, uh, the membrane of the new virion actually contains all the spikes that it needs. And then assembly and maturation are going to take place. Protease is going to do its job to break apart all the proteins into the appropriate subunits. And then in the end, we have a complete intact HIV virion, like you see here, that's ready to go infect another CD4 T cell. So work your way through this slide a few times. Think about all the different steps that are taking place and, uh, and consider how this fits in with your concept of how viruses in general gain access, cause disease, replicate themselves, and exit again. So let's hit some highlights here. Retroviruses are enveloped, single-stranded RNA viruses with an unusual life cycle, to say the least. They use reverse transcriptase and integrase to insert a double-stranded DNA copy of their genome into the host genome. And this provirus that's integrated in the host genome becomes a long-term source of virions leading to a chronic infection. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you guys next time.